Hello, this is D and I'm back with another video. Well, a few days ago, I brought you a story stating that the PlayStation 5 would be running AMD's Navi architecture. Now, today we have some interesting news on how that Navi GPU will run. Now, as usual, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. Now, today's article is coming from tweaktown.com. I'm just gonna read a little bit of what they have to say. Now, according to the article, they say that the RX 680, according to the sources, will be powered by the Navi GPU architecture and feature 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. They say it will have the performance of a GTX 1080 to a GTX 1080 Ti. They said they expect the price to be somewhere between $299 to $399 and will battle with the GTX 1080 Ti at higher resolutions due to its faster GDDR6 memory. Now they go on to say that AMD will also have a Navi 20 on a 7 nanometer high end GPU in 2020 to 2021. Now they said they had a source at Computex 2018 that told them that we will get Navi halfway through 2018. Now in the story that I did a few days ago, AMD was quoting as saying that we will get Navi in 2019. So it's a little bit murky when we're going to actually see the Navi architecture, but I will say it is very interesting that they are going to be competing with the GTX 1080 Ti and the GTX 1080. Now we could see something with multiple SKUs in my opinion, where we'd have something for $300 that would compete with the GTX 1080 and for $400 something that would compete with the GTX 1080 Ti. If this turns out to be true, this is a major win for AMD. As we all know, the GTX 1080 Ti is quite expensive. Now, to be fair, in August or September, we are expecting the GTX 11 series to hit the market, so we'll have to see where the performance lies on that. However, I think GTX 1080 Ti performance for $400 is extremely good for PC gamers. Now, on this GPU being in the PlayStation 5, this is also a major win. Now, GTX 1080 Ti performance inside of a console is tremendous. Now, we don't really need more than 60 frames per second at 4K on a console. To be honest, if you had anything more than that, say 120 frames per second at 4K, that console would be extremely expensive. Furthermore, I think the next generation of console games will be targeting 60 frames per second. So 120 frames would not be needed. Yes, we do have some 120 hertz TVs to the market right now, but like I said before, it would be very expensive to bring a 4K 120 frames per second console to the gaming market. Now I will say this is very exciting news for AMD and for gamers out there. Now I just want to take a little bit of time here to discuss the next generation of Xbox. Now Phil Spencer was doing the rounds at E3 and most recently did an interview at Giant Bomb. Now he dropped a few tidbits and also hinted at multiple SKUs for the next system. Now he was very clear that he wants the next Xbox to deliver 60 frames per second. Now in the interview he stated that this generation of consoles, the GPU and the CPU are mismatched and they're looking to address that in the next generation of consoles. You invoked the concept of the next generation on yeah. stage um, and, and so now we have that countdown clock up somewhere just like <laughs> well it's probably holiday 2020 that we're looking at here for this and the power band will be here and this sort of stuff and uh, so when you pie in the sky think about like what that next box is when, when you start this process uh, you know like maybe even pre R&D like hey what's what's possible but when you sit and look at the the Xbox brand, the Xbox line of consoles, and you think about that next thing, what are the things that you look at and go, well, we need, we have to have this? Yeah, we've been, and you can watch, we're, we're pretty open about some of this stuff. Uh, if you watch what we're doing on the Xbox consoles right now with like variable refresh rate, mm -hmm. looking at higher frame rate uh, capability, I think frame rate is an area where consoles can do more just in general. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the balance between CPU and GPU in today's uh, consoles, they're a little bit out of whack relative to what's on the, on the PC side. So I think there's work that we can do there. Now I have to say, if Sony is using the Navi GPU exclusively in their PlayStation 5, that would leave Microsoft with no other alternative but to use a different GPU. Now I think they would go with a 7 nanometer Vega GPU and pair it with GDDR6 RAM. Now a shrunken down 7 nanometer Vega GPU should outperform a Navi GPU. Now we don't know too much about the Navi GPU, but we do know that it won't be at 7 nanometer. Now the Vega GPU right now gives you performance at a GPU 
GTX 1080 level. Now, if you shrunk that down to a seven nanometer, of course, you're gonna have better power consumption, and of course, the performance will be greater. Now, if they do go with a seven nanometer Vega GPU, I do think this will outperform what the PlayStation 5 has inside of it. Now, of course, this is all speculation on my part, so we're gonna have to wait and see how this all plays out. Now, I will say I am very excited for the next generation of consoles. I am over this generation and the 30 frames per second games. Anyways, I wanna know what you guys think, so please leave your comments down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.